Greetings and welcome to the introduction to physical science. In this lecture, we are going to discuss Kirchhoff's rules, which are some ways of looking at more complicated circuits, and especially those circuits that cannot be reduced uh, by the methods we've shown previously so that you cannot necessarily reduce them to just a single resistance and voltage as we looked at, and then be able to solve them directly using uh, Ohm's law. So let's go ahead and get started here. And what we want to look at is that there are some circuits that are much more complex and such as the one that we see here that cannot be reduced as we looked at previously. And we can use Kirchhoff's rules and there are two rules that we're going to look at here. And they do apply to any circuit. So they're actually useful in other circuits as well. They work in a simple circuit or a complex circuit. And they are related to two things. And essentially they look at the conservation of charge. Remember that electrical charge is one of those conserved quantities as well as conservation of energy. So since those two things have to occur, we can consider what happens at various junctions so that charge and energy are both conserved. So let's take a look at Kirchhoff's two rules here and let's start off with the first one. The first rule is the junction rule and the junction rule states that the sum of all currents entering a junction must equal the sum of all currents leaving the junction. Now hopefully that million make common sense that you have a certain amount of current coming in and therefore when it splits you'll have a certain amount going this way and a certain amount going this way. Now they do not have to be equal but they have to add up. So here we see that I1 which was 11 amps is equal to I2 which was 7 amps and plus I4 I sorry I3 which was 4 amps. So since 11 is equal to 7 plus 4, Kirchhoff's first rule is satisfied here. So that looks like, and you can imagine, you can't. where would the current go otherwise? So a certain amount of current is coming in. It has to go out and split up and be equal. And this is really related to the conservation of electric charge. The amount of charge entering the junction must equal the amount of charge that leaves the junction. So however much electrical charge is coming in has to come out so that charge remains conserved and that we are not creating or destroying electrical charge, which as one of the conserved items is something that cannot happen. Now the second rule is the loop rule. So the loop rule here says that the algebraic sum of changes in potential so that's the voltages in any closed circuit path. So any loop that closes back around on itself must be equal to zero. So we'll have positive and negative changes and you have to end up back at zero where you start. So in this case you would have a voltage across the voltage device and then you would have a voltage drop across this resistor, this resistor, and this resistor and as you add them up the total voltage here ends up getting split and some of it is dropped at the first resistor some at the second and the remainder at the third so that by the time you get past the third resistor and head back into your voltage source there the voltage is back to zero so you've actually concluded all of that. Now this is related to conservation of energy and the potential differences. Remember that's like a potential energy. Those are changes in energy and because there are no other transfers of energy in or out of the circuit energy must be conserved. So the voltage total must be the same so that if we add up the voltages as we go around the circuit it will always end up coming out to zero. And it is a good way to double check that you've got everything right in one of these. So applying these, let's look at this, what we're looking at. The way in order to do these, the first thing is to label the direction in which the current is flowing in each branch of the circuit. 
So you label where the current is. And it doesn't matter if you get the direction wrong. So if you guess wrong, it's okay. All it will do is change the sign. So in this case, it's minus IR. In this case, it's plus IR. So the worst you do is if you choose the wrong direction is that it gets the sign backwards. So you can you will still get the right values. And you want to identify any closed loop and decide which way to go. So are you going to go around the loop clockwise? Or are you going to go around that loop counterclockwise? And either one again will work fine. You just have to uh, keep track of what you're doing there. And again, the worst thing it will do is change the sign for you. So when we look at these again, as you're looking at it across a resistor and you look at the voltage here again, what's going to happen is that the voltage across from the voltage source is going to end up being split and dropped across each resistor in the circuit. And the total voltage drops will have to be equal to that original voltage. So let's finish up here with our summary. And what we looked at uh, were Kirchhoff's rules, which is a way to be able to sub sub solve much more complex circuits than the ones we looked at previously. They depend on the conservation of charge and conservation of energy and selecting the direction of current flow and the direction around the loop does not matter. All it will do is change your signs. So you'll still be able to complete this even if you've made the wrong estimate as to what perhaps the direction of the current was. So that concludes this lecture on Kirchhoff's rules. We'll be back again next time for another topic in physical science. So until then, have a great day everyone, and I will see you in class.